Good morning and welcome to Raising a Standard, where we promise you the Word of God that will build your faith and challenge you to the call of God in your life, sharing Jesus Christ and meeting the needs of His people in spirit, soul, and body. Well, we're so glad that you're with us today, and we just thank God that you're starting your day off with an encouraging word from God. Remember, one word from God can and will change our lives forever when we apply that word to our life. Well, Brother Henry, how do I apply the word to my life? The Bible says we can be a doer of the word and not just to hear only. In other words, it is essential for us to hear, but it's more essential or just as essential for us to do what we hear and incorporate it into our everyday walk and talk. So we appreciate you so much. We just thank God for you. And hey, our world is changing by the second almost, it seems. But thank God, He is the same. The Bible says He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And hey, He's not shocked or surprised by anything that's going on. We are, because we, we don't know the end before the beginning like He does. But when we follow Him and we are doer of what He tells us to do, we can walk in the blessings of God and we can walk in the supernatural empowerment and graces that he's given us. And I thank God that I believe you are doing that. One of the reasons is because you're putting God and his word first place in your life. And when you do that, then he is able to lead and guide you into all truth. And that's our prayer for you. And at Reaching World Bible Church, we want you to know that, hey, we love you. We appreciate you. We encourage you to join us for our live stream services that we're having at Reaching World Bible Church on the Reaching World Bible Church Facebook page and the Reaching World Bible Church YouTube channel. Remember, we want you to like us, to share, to follow us on the Facebook page, and also like us and share and subscribe, and then ring the bell on the YouTube channel. It's uh, uh, just a wonderful opportunity for us to get into your households, and we can literally get into your home through your Facebook or your YouTube channel. A lot of folks are enjoying the YouTube because they can watch on on, on their uh, big screens and their televisions, and, and that's fun, fun too as well. And But whatever device or platform that you use, we just are excited about it. On on, on today at 11 a.m., we, we will have a, what we call the mid, midweek dose of the Holy Ghost, the Reaching You With The Word broadcast. And then on Sundays at 10 a.m., we have our Sunday morning worship service and doing some great things at Reaching The World through the different platforms and uh, incorporating different uh, uh, things, uh, doing Zoom meetings and having some prayer calls and that kind of thing. And so, hey, log on to our website. You can see what's going on. Our website is rtwbc.com, rtwbc.com. If you want to watch the live streams, you just go to Watch Live. It'll take you to that page where you can choose which platform you want to watch through, whether it's the Facebook or the YouTube, and it'll take you directly to the either the YouTube channel or the Facebook page. And while you're there, if you want to support this ministry, if you want to give, an easy, safe way to give is on the website through the online giving. Just log on there, go down to choose a fund, and then you can just follow the directions of what it says. Simple, easy, by credit card or debit card and safely and securely support this ministry. Hey, and we thank you, those of you that are praying, those of you that uh, made this a part of your uh, daily uh receiving from God because you can go on a website or the Facebook or the YouTube channel because all the messages are embedded. They're all there and you can view and be blessed and at any time of the day, <laughs> anywhere in the world through these platforms. And we thank God for these avenues for him to, uh, give us so that the word can go forth. And those of you that are supporting us with your prayers and with your, with your finances, Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we say hello to all our Reaching the World Bible Church church family and friends of this ministry. You are a part. When you're a partner with us, when you're a, a member of this family, then every blessing that we receive, God is going to bless you with. And it's going to be just fantastic when you get into, into, into heaven and someone comes up to you and say, thank you for giving. You're the reason I'm here. 
and praise God. And you can do so much from where, right where you are now by sowing with your prayers or with your resources. And we thank you for that. And God bless you. Well, as we get into our teaching this morning, uh, we uh, for the last few weeks, we've been uh, speaking about the aspects or different aspects of prayer. And our prayer life today is so important because that's our communication, our communion with God, and that's how we fellowship and talk with Him and stay into contact. We're encouraging our church members to call each other and to uh, see each other, invest their time and energy into each other because it's so important that we as family are, are in contact with each other. And it is essential for those of us that are part of the family of God, our faith family, to stay in contact with our Abba Father, our Daddy God. And Pastor, what are we talking about specifically? Well, we entitled this Steps to Answered Prayer. Steps to Answered Prayer. There are different procedures through the Word of God that give us uh, avenues into uh, just, just total communication into what God would have us to, to do and to be because we're communicating with Him. And there are steps that we can take that can assure us of walking in the blessings of God. We, we, said, we said this, by faith we reach out to claim what we need and we pray in faith. We pray in the Spirit, we pray in our understanding and we reach out for what we have need of and then we create the reality that we're living in in our life through fellowship and communication with God and then putting it into action in our everyday walk and talk. And we start talking about different steps and we'll kind of refresh it just a little bit before we get into where we're going to hook up with today. But we talked about step one was decide what you want from God. It's essential for you to make that decision and to be decisive, deciding what you want from God and then following through with it. Um, scripture in James 1 verse 6 says this, but let him, him or her, whoever it is, him generic there, talking about uh, uh, any human being, <laughs> let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is unsure, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed to and fro. For that next verse in verse 7 says this, For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. We want to receive from the Lord. But if you're wavering, if you're indecisive, you want because you must be specific. And then verse 8 clarifies it. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. We need to be stable in our ways. We need to be stable in God's Word. And God will help us to move on and to go on in the things of God, to walk in the blessings of God in our communication with Him. First, we got to decide what we want from God. And then we said step number two, we said read Scripture that promise the answer you need. We need to get in the Word and find Scripture that promises the answer. Well, Brother Henry, does the Bible have everything that I might ask in it? And, 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 and it gives me who I, who I need to marry, where, where I need to live, what job I need to have. Not specifically in those terms, but the Bible does give us direction of how to get there and then hear and receive by His Spirit in our spirit as God speak, speaks to us directly. When we follow these steps, we put ourselves in the right position to hear from God and then to act in faith and do and be and become and have what God says we could have, do, be, and become. We saw in Joshua 1, chapter 1, verse 8, Joshua 1, verse 8, he said this, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate. Meditation is getting it in your spirit, getting it in your heart, muttering it over again. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, 24 hours, 7 days a week, Brother Henry. No, making a lifestyle practice, doing it all consistently all the time. 
Why? That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. You and I want to make our way prosperous. We want the prosperity of the blessings of God. You and I definitely want to have good success in our life. And how we do that is to have a consistent communication and fellowship with God as he leads us and guides us into all truth. God wants you to know he's concerned about every aspect of your life. He's concerned about your husband. He's concerned about your wife, your children. He's concerned about uh, what uh, what decisions that you make. What he, he concerned about the hairs on your head. <laughs> he knows every aspect of your being. So when we get into fellowship with it, Pastor, why do you say that? Because the Bible talks about our, that they're numbered and he knows how many we have. <laughs> In other words, every, what we consider small thing, God wants to help us with. And he'll direct us and he'll lead us. But we have to follow his instructions. We've got to decide what we want from God. God, And that's, that, that, that's the first initial step. And then we got to find the promises in Scripture that gives us the answer that we have need of. And God will help us to walk by faith. Walking by faith is that you not going by everything that you just see in the natural. We're going by what God told us in the word is ours, even before we have it in our hand. Believing is believing that you have what God said before it actually manifests in your hand, before you have it. If, if I have it, I don't have to believe for it. You know, it took me a while to get there, and it may take you a little while if you're just hearing this uh, for maybe the, the hundred times. Brother Henry, it takes that many times? As many times as necessary. You know, some of us need a continual input of the influence of the grace and the mercy and the love of God. And we need to practice what the Word says. But we have to have a consistent fellowship to get to know God and get to know his word. It's sort of like a natural relationship. You know, my wife and I know each other a lot better now than we did when we were dating. Well, Brother Henry, wasn't it exciting today? Yes, it's exciting to date and to get to know each other it is, it, it, in that process. But when you first start that relationship, it develops. You don't really know each other as well as you will once you spend time together. You get to know uh, different emotions. You get to know different expressions. You get to know when, when voice tones change, it may be time for you to be quiet. You get to know what not to say. You get to realize, hey, when emotions start rising up on the inside of you, stop. If you're going by the promptings of the Holy Spirit, he will say, be quiet. And I say it like, like this. He'll say, tell me, shut up. Don't say anything. You're going to get in trouble. And Pastor, you say, you're laughing about it. Hey, uh, the more we grow in the things of God, in fellowship and communication, the stronger his voice becomes to our, and I put my hands to my ears, but our spiritual ears, our heart. The more familiar we become with the voice of God through his word, through by his spirit, through us uh, walking in faith together, the more quick we are to act on what he tells us to do and the more empowerment of the graces and the mercies of God we will walk in and we'll have. And Believe me, we all need that. In the day that we live in today, when so much is changing, seeming by the second or by, by the minute or every other day, something is different. You and I need to have the constant consistency of a loving God who we know cares about us, every aspect of our being and who knows us and wants to know us more. But you know what? You and I need to want to know him. You know, it's something more important than you knowing God. Oh, no, it's nothing more important than me knowing God. Yes, there is, according to the word. What's more important than me knowing God? 
God knowing you. He needs to know who you are. He needs to know that you're his son, you're his daughter, and that he can trust you. And he gets to know you by you fellowshipping constantly and consistently in and with him and loving him, he comes to be able to trust you. I ask you this question, can God trust you right now? Well, Brother Henry, I don't even know if I trust myself. Well, if you don't trust yourself, you, you, no one else can. You have to be able to get in the word and know who you are in Christ and know whose you are and then know him as your Abba Father, as your Daddy God. We find that in and through and with the Word of God. It's not just enough to be emotional and get excited in, in a church service or even have a, a wonderful experience. I, I love to have wonderful spiritual experiences, we call them, where, where the anointing comes upon us, where we have those spiritual goose pimples pop up. on that, That's fantastic, but it's more or just as important to have that consistent knowledge of knowing that God cares about you and that he's aware of your heart. He's aware that your mind is being transformed and being renewed by the word of God and that you are walking by faith. You're believing to receive the things that he's promised you and you're trusting God and that he can trust you. Once we get into that type of relationship, we have that type of fellowship, then we're going to walk in a continual empowerment of God in our day-to-day -day life. Our prayer life will be more effective. Our communication with God, but with others, brothers and sisters in the body of Christ, will be more effective. First again, step one, decide what you want from God. Be decisive. Don't be unstable. Step number two, read, find scripture that promise the answer you need. Get in the word, study to show yourself approved so that you can rightly divide the word of truth. And then step number three, what is that, Brother Henry? Ask God for the things that you want. Oh, no, I can't just ask God for the things I want and expect it, can I? Well, what does the Bible say? Uh, what does the Bible tell you? You know, anytime we have questions like, like that, even when you get something from someone that you uh, prayerfully, deeply respect and honor as, as, as knowledgeable in the Word of God, find out what the Word says for yourself. Hey, if I give you something or any preacher or anyone gives you something that they say is from the Word, get in it for yourself. And we need to ask God for the things we want according to the word. Where do you find that, Brother Henry? Well, in Matthew chapter 7, Matthew chapter 7, verse number 7, he says this, ask. <laughs> Can't get any clearer than that. Kid. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek. Ask and seek. Seek who? Seek what? Seek, and you shall find. Knock, ask, seek, and knock. Who? O on God. And it shall be open unto you. What's it? We're talking about the word. Verse 8 lets us know. It says, For everyone that asketh from God receiveth. And he that really seeketh, and that means diligently seek him, the scripture says. You ask, yes, you're asking it in faith. You're asking because you believe and you trust God. But then you're really seeking after him. You're diligently going after what he said because you believe in him, you trust him, and you love him. And to him that knocketh, you knock on the, the uh, door of heaven or the door of the blessing, and God, the scripture says here, it shall be open unto you. God wants to open the windows of heaven for you. He wants to open the doors of blessing for you. He wants you to have everything that he said you could have in the word, but there's a responsibility that each of us have to do. Well, Brother Henry, how do you know all that? Well, just looking back in, in the verse prior, in the chapter prior to that, in Matthew 6, verse 8, Matthew 6, verse 8, he says this, 
Be not ye therefore like unto them. What them? Those that didn't do that. For your father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask. He knows what we have need of before we ask. But yet he told us to ask. You know, that's essential. He, he already knows. We said, well, God knows all things. Yes, he does. But you and I, do we have what we have need of? Have we, and if we haven't asked, if we aren't seeking him, if we aren't knocking on the, the door of the opportunity for him to bless us, we're showing that we don't trust him. He told us to ask, not asking because he's not aware. He is aware. He knows what we need better than we know what we need. But it's up to us to pursue it, to diligently seek him, the blessings of God, the direction from God, the empowerment, the anointing of God, the grace of God. Yes, it's unmerited. Grace is unmerited favor. You have favor. But if you don't know you have favor, if you don't pursue the favor of God by doing what God tells you to do, you're not going to walk in the blessings of that. It's yours. It's available unto you. God knows. But do you have and are you walking in the light of it? Well, Brother Henry, a lot of things I'm not. I don't, I, I don't know why I don't have them. Well, have you asked? Well, I asked and then and I didn't get it when I thought I should. And I said, well, I guess God didn't want me to have it. Well, who told you because you didn't get it on your time frame that God didn't want you to have it? Did he tell you it was yours? Salvation is ours. Healing is ours. Deliverance is ours. Break, breaking of strongholds is ours. Well, Brother Henry, I have strongholds in my life that I had just been able to turn loose of real easy. Well, strongholds won't turn loose real easy. It takes the empowerment and the grace and the mercy of God and asking and diligently seeking him for some things for us to break those shackles off of us. Brother Henry, you sound like you're putting a lot of responsibility on me and that God just won't just to uh, uh, take everything bad away from me because because he's a loving father. Yes, he is a loving father. But you know what? A lot of times I've noticed that things that have come to me really easy, or at least I thought was very easy, I didn't value them as much. Brother Henry, are you saying everything should be difficult and hard? No, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying some things that you've been walking in a long time, it may take a little while for you to change your process and get rid of those things. What do you mean by changing my process? Stop doing some of those things that got you in that position. Stop going to those places that get you in trouble. Finding accountability partners people that will confront you. I thank God my best accountability partner is my wife. If I'm having trouble with something <laughs> and I tell her about it, she's, she confronts me on it. Oh, Brother Henry, I don't like being confronted. Well, then, then you're perfect and you don't have any problems to, to get through, do you? No, none of us are there. Well, we got God. Yes, yes, we do. And thank God we have him. And he's the power source, but he puts people in our lives when we seek him that can be resources to help us. And your spouse just may be, well, they're irritating to me sometimes. No, you reckon that you might be irritating sometimes? No, you're so beautiful and so kind and sweet. You, yes, I know you are, but there are things that we need to, to allow God to help us to mold and reframe in our lives. And sometimes the folks that confront you, sometimes even the folks that despitefully persecute you and abuse you, are you saying God put them in there to abuse you? No, he didn't do that, but he can use those things to help you to come to a reality, I need to change. One of the things that one of my instructors in Bible school told, told us that stuck with me and still stick, sticks with me now, even when things come to you that, you, that, that maybe you don't want to hear and are hurtful, examine them. 
Ask yourself this question. Is there a grain of truth in this? Even if they didn't like you and they were trying to hurt you with it, is there a grain of truth in it? Examine it for yourself. And if there is, that person, if you make the changes, if you make the adjustment, has just helped you. In our prayer life, God's not out to harm us. He's not out to hurt us. He's out to help us. When he tells us something in the word, it will bless us if we incorporate in our daily talk, daily walk and our daily talk. Ask God for the things you want. And God has provided those things. He loves you. You know, we love you too. And the word of God is an empowerment for you and I. We can grow. And at Regional World Bible Church, we want you to know that God's word, the more consistently we hear that, the more we know what to ask and how to receive. We invite you to those live stream services, Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Hey, that Sunday morning service is a blessing, but also today at 11 a.m. Central Time, that midweek dose, another dose of the Holy Ghost, uh, reaching you with the word. And then we have a rebroadcast of that service at 7 p.m. tonight, where Sister Ellen and I come in, say hi to you. Join us on our live stream services. We've got, join us on our website, blessings there, information about how you can have send a prayer request then, how you can be blessed. The word of God is life unto us, and prayer is communication with God. Remember, feed your faith and starve your doubts to death, and God's blessings will overtake you. Well, we see how time slipped away. We'll see you next week. God bless you. <music>